Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Wednesday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and freaking early, man. It's 3 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, I came across a news story, and it's about a YouTube video. That YouTube video will be right down, right on top, in the video description right down below. It's just a five out of five minute video. You can click on it and see exactly what I'm talking about. It's an appalling video, a uh, disgusting video of a white woman in a L.A. police station. And the thing she is saying is just unbelievable. To me, she is a Trump supporter. She is what scares me about Trump supporters. And I'll, I'll try to tell you, I can't, I can't, I can't say, because my video is monetized and everything, I can't say exactly what she's saying. You'll have to watch it for yourselves. But it is just over the top, unbelievable, uh, kind of like a 1940s Germany mentality about just taking out people of color, uh, removing them. Yeah, just it's incredible. She's asked, she asked the cops why they don't use their guns. Uh, before I get into that, as I watch this, it occurred to me, this is exactly what scares me about Trump supporters. Like J.D. Vance talking about the, the way they, they seem to want to, to divide society into us versus them and i've noticed recently that i think people sometimes view me as a trump supporter just because of my the way i look um a gen x guy and it made me think about the confrontation videos i did the other day i didn't say i didn't include everything i didn't include what this gentleman was saying the first video i didn't i didn't put in the title that he was a black man the second title, I decided to include that because it was part of the whole thing. Both times, both confrontations, he addressed me. This is how I knew it was the same guy because the way, he, what he called me. He, he called me white boy. Now, now that, that bothered me for two reasons. I'm not a boy. I'm 58. I'm going to be 59 years old. I am not a boy. And I'm not, I'm not all white. I'm, Native, I'm part Native American. And... I've had, I'd say, about at least a half dozen occurrences where people of color, you know, I'm easygoing, I'm friendly to everybody, I'm a liberal, I, I'm for equality and inclusion and diversity and all that stuff. You know, I talk to everybody, I treat everybody the same, unless, you know, the way, or the way they treat me. And I'd say at least a half dozen times. I've walked by somebody, I've been at a store or something like that, and people of color have singled me out. Like, I've, I've caught comments, I've caught looks, aggressive actions for... And I, I believe this is because they believe that I am a Trump supporter because of the way I look. Like, I, I'm being... I'm, 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 I am the victim of prejudice. I, I really am. You know, like a reverse prejudice. I hate to say that, but it's the truth. I didn't mention what this guy said in the video because I didn't want to, first of all, because my video is monetized, and I didn't want to make it about color. Because to me, it wasn't about color. It was about going about my daily business without being, without fear, uh, without somebody harassing me. You know, even though what he said to me, I didn't want to make it about color. But after the second time, I decided to include his color in the title. Now, before when I've done this, I've had people ask me, well, why did you have to say it was a black man? Why is it important this color? You know, and I thought I should make a video telling you guys right, that he specifically, I felt that the, the, that there's a good possibility this whole thing started because of my color. He saw me and he started addressing me as white boy. It was like, F you, white boy. Uh, you know, F this, F that. Both times. Uh, okay. Now, this lady in the police station, to me, she is the epitome of a Trump supporter. She says a couple things that really catch, besides for the appalling stuff that I can't even repeat here. She says, she asked the police, what, what are your guns for? You just sit here in the police station. And then she talks about uh, homeless, druggy black people breaking cars. And she says, why don't you, you know, take them out? You know, and that's what she's saying. There's, there's other black guys. There's black guys in the police station. And this black guy that's filming it freaks. You know, he gets angry. 
you know, rightfully so. And he starts hitting her back about the way she looks. You know, she's so out of shape. Uh, her clothes, you know, she's wearing cheap clothes and she's complaining about all black people and what the police should do to homeless black people. Uh, and this, this offends me on so many levels. You know, when she said druggy, you know, druggy people, you know, look, I, I was, you know, I was a druggie for two and a half, two and a half decades. And the last thing I wanted to be was a druggie. It reminds me of some of the nurses that I ran into in rehabs and detoxes. I had this one nurse when I was in a detox and I had a headache. I was going through withdrawals. I had been going through withdrawals for five days. I, I hadn't had any sleep. I had, you know, restless legs. I was throwing up, everything. And it was just starting to subside, and I had a pounding headache. And of course, they wouldn't, you know, I, there's a, a med window, a med, med window. And I went up to the med window, and I just asked for Tylenol, just regular Tylenol. And she accused me of lying. She says, oh, you know, you guys all want, you, all, you guys all think pills will solve your, your problems. And then she, she tells me a joke. She thinks it's hilarious. Uh, seriously, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in withdrawals, and I'm just asking her for, for I'm asking her for, I don't, I think it was just one Tylenol. I don't think they would even give us two. It was one Tylenol for a headache. And she, she asked me this. She says, how do you, how do I know an addict's lying? And I said, I don't know. You know, what do you mean? How? And she says, his lips are moving. Huh? You know, she thought that, she thought that was her joke. She thought that was hilarious. And she was working in a unit for drug addicts. You know, obviously in the wrong place. And that's, she reminds me exactly of this woman. This woman in the L.A. police station, apparently, she, she and then she says something else just over the top upon. This is what terrifies me if Donald Trump becomes president. To me, this, you know, she's, re, she's repeating almost verbatim the talking points on Fox, the, the ridiculous rhetoric, uh, you know, Donald Trump, the people coming here, you know, ruining our country. She tells this guy to go back to Africa. Okay, she says, uh, she says, she says, I'm an American. You, you could go back to Africa. Nobody brought me here. You know, and I think about, you know, I don't usually bring this up, you know, because I'm only part Native American, Micmac from Maine. My, my, my family is part French Canadian and part Native American Micmac. And they're called uh, uh, the uh, Acadian, Acadian people of Maine, Micmac nation, Micmac tribe, and I'm part Native American. <clears throat> and when I hear a lady like this, who might be Irish or Italian, her, 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 her family probably came here, I don't know, maybe two or three generations ago, maybe the early 1900s from Ireland, you know, and that's, that's, I, that's not an issue with me. You know, I'm part Native American, but I, I don't usually bring that stuff up. But to hear her sit there and say how she was, you know, she was born here and, you know, nobody brought her here. You know, and telling this guy, you know, and I think about that being part Native American, you know, and I was like, you know, you, you got some freaking gall lady, you know, assuming like, you know, that she's, she's the rightful, you know, rightful heir of this land, you know, because her, her people came here a couple generations, I'm assuming a couple generations ago, uh, you know, and again, I, I get the feeling this has happened a couple times and I have no idea how to respond to this. A lot of people I graduated with, if I go through a yearbook or on Facebook and I look at like people my age that I graduated with, I'd say like 90, 80 to 90% of them are Trump supporters, especially the guys. I'd say 95% of the male, the guys that I graduated with are probably hardcore, angry, hateful Trump supporters. You know, so I understand why some occasionally I'll be out on the street and I'll catch a look or a, I'll catch a comment from somebody I don't even know, a person of color with anger towards me, you know, and uh, you know, I, I don't know, maybe subconsciously that's why I wear, you know, because I have a, a progressive hairstyle. I dress progressively, you know, bright colors. I don't dress like a typical guy my age. And I, I don't know if maybe there's a reason for that because I don't want to look like a typical guy my age. I don't want to be pin or pigeonholed as one of these conservative, hateful Trump supporters. But it's happened. It's happened before. I've actually had people say that to me, comments about 
uh, MAGA or something like that. You know, and I, I, I don't even know how to respond to that because, because I, I, I despise that whole group. I despise the whole MAGA. You know, I'm not going to sit there and re- try to and try to explain to them, hey, look, you know, because it sounds ridiculous if I go, hey, look, I'm a liberal. I'm on your side. You know, that sounds patronizing and, and ridiculous, but it's the truth. You know, I, you know, the whole George Floyd thing. Uh, Black Lives Matter and all that. I, you know, I, I, I completely support that. You know, and I'll catch flack. I think because sometimes people of color, occasionally, it's not very often, but it's happened, where people of color will prejudge me and just assume that I'm a Trump supporter. And I could kind of understand how they would do that because the vast majority majority of people that look like me are Trump supporters. You know, so. I hopefully that's, that explains why I used color in the second video where I said uh, another altercation, another kind. I said con, it was a confrontation. It was not an altercation. An altercation is this in my in my mind. An altercation is when fists fly. A confrontation is before fists fly. You know, yelling. So it was a confrontation, and both times this guy addressed me. That's one thing I heard clearly him saying was white boy white boy this and that if like I said that bothered me the thing the thing that bothered me the most was him calling me a boy you know at a 50 at 58 years old I'm not a boy you know so those are some thoughts check out the video down below I can't even repeat uh this is what terrifies me about Trump supporters their their desire to actually just make this uh, a Protestant white Christian country you know, uh, exclusively, and deport or worse, anybody else that doesn't agree with them. Because that really seems like, you know, I don't think I'm exaggerating. I don't think I'm being, uh, you know, uh, over the top when I, I, I say that. The majority of these people, I mean, they're angry in the way they, get, they judge everybody else. It's just, it's scary to me. The video's down below. Let me know what you think. Have a good Wednesday.